All right, I'm gonna do a video on the equipment of the tank here. Um, so the actual display is a 600 gallon display, eight foot by four foot deep by 30 inches tall. Um, it's acrylic, it's three quarter inch acrylic, uh, three quarter inch acrylic. It's Euro braced, so I have the uh, you know brace all the way around the top, which I actually like. You see, I put tools and all kinds of crap everywhere. You know, it's nice. I don't like it for the uh, light penetration, but I do like it for the strength. I know I can actually go to sleep at night knowing my tank's not going to burst a seam. Got some uh, guests. <laughs> it's Maverick. All right, so uh, next. I guess I should still talk about the tank. The uh, MP60s on the left hand side here. I have three of them. This is kind of the higher flow side. Uh, you can see the three pushing a lot of flow over there, but on the right side I only have two. And the reason why is because I want to take, make this a little bit more tame. I want to have a little bit less flow on the side because all these soft corals, um, you know, they, they require a little bit less flow. Whereas the left side over here, I mean, uh, I try to make it a little bit kind of insane. You can see the flow in this milli. More accurately, you can see the particles in the water here. That's a better representation. Next, uh, I have the RFG nozzles up here, the random flow generators made by VCA, Vivid Creative Aquatics. I really like these. They just add a little bit of extra flow up on the top that uh, wouldn't be hit by the uh, MP60s. Down here, I have the uh, 480 gallon sump. It is pushed by the Reef Octopus, two Varios 8s. I have two return pumps. They both have check valves. Um, that way, if one of them fails, I know that I'll still have a return pump turning over my tank. It's such a crucial thing, um, such a simple, crucial thing that everybody, I feel like, should have. Uh, this is actually one of the, my favorite parts of my aquarium. This is the Vectra L1, and what it's doing is it's actually uh, pushing water in a closed loop system in my tank. Um, this is actually bringing the water in, and then it's pushing it up, and up here I have two options. Um, the first one is just going back into my tank, and it's just putting the water back in. I have a needle valve here, so I can kind of fine tune the flow and stuff. But that other one, uh, what it does is it actually opens up a valve out the side of my house, and I can actually drain water directly to the sewer just by opening up this valve right here. And it's really convenient. It's actually one of my favorite parts of my aquarium. Um, you know, I set up myself to be lazy and that way it actually gets done, you know, whether I'm going to be lazy or not. Uh, it's just something I say about the aquarium is just set yourself up for success by, you know, automating it or, or you know, making it easier, not necessarily automating it. But again, this is uh, one of my favorite parts of my tank just because of how easy it is to get that done, you know, the water changes. Uh, so the next thing is... Uh, just my plumbing, you know, it's pretty basic. I just have the two inch drains coming in. I have tons and tons of live rock. I mean, to the brim. Uh, I, I try to actually like make it a point to overdo the live rock, how much live rock I have. Next I have this uh, refugium. It is probably about 180 gallons or something like that. Uh, I started with something like a softball or a volleyball worth of Cheeto and you see what it's at now. I mean, I just can't pull Cheeto out fast enough anymore to give it away because it's just growing. Um, you know, I'm really happy with my refugium growth now. Uh, I, I, I would attribute it to the light, um, which is actually just a china box right now. It's nothing special. Um, I have it fully run on a uh, 36 inch china box, full spectrum, full blast, everything. I was using something previously and it just... It wasn't putting down the numbers I really wanted to. Um, this is actually the light I was using. I had a, several of these, and I just didn't really like how they performed the Kessels, uh, the A80s or whatever. You know, I, I have a big boy tank, so I, I switched to this China box, and I really liked the performance, and I was really happy with how it uh, how it uh, worked for my refugium and everything. You can actually see my my calcium reactor outlet right there. It's actually that's all I use that LED for anymore. I just hold my calcium reactor. <laughs> This is the Trident. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Trident. Um, I will not set up a tank without a Trident. Um, I'm coming over here to show you that I have a Apex up here. I like to keep it separate. I'm trying to 
to show you that it's kind of a mess right now because I just did those cabinets, but uh, I like to keep my Apex away from the rest of the stuff and away from the aquarium because of the moisture. I like to keep that product in particular dry because it's kind of the brain and the most important one. If that goes down, you're kind of screwed. Um, everything else can kind of be swapped out and replaced and stuff like that, but uh, I like to keep this one separate and kind of away from power. I know it looks bad right now next to the power cords, but generally I have this one separate away from power cords because if you have a power cord running too close to a pH probe, it can actually affect your results. It's like low voltage uh, interference and stuff like that. You know, it sounds like craziness or like not much, but when you're dealing with calcium reactors and you're dealing with like thousands of dollars worth of animals, you really want to pay attention to trends and you want to, be able to have trends that you can account on for. And that's why uh, I really like the Apex. Um, this is just my catwalk behind my tank. I actually have a foot back here, so I can actually walk and get to it, back to it, but it's, it's not really, um, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a skinny guy anymore. I can't really fit back there like I once could. <laughs> um, so yeah, back to the Trident. I love it. I, I recommend taking the drawer out and running it like I have it here. No pinches in the cables, no stresses in the cables. It'll work flawlessly. Calibrate with your fluid inside your tank. So it's the same temperature. You'll get flawless results. I had it one that was a, a, a bust, but I've had two since then and they're fucking amazing units. Sorry for the language. Uh, uh, I'm trying out this uh, KH Guardian now. That's the new toy I'm trying out. I, ha I can't really give a verdict on it yet. Um, this is my uh, auto top off. It's just a basic float valve. You know, uh, you can see how sharp the angle is there. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because that metal nut in there that I'm kind of focusing on right now, uh, it actually will rust. So you want to do a sharp angle on that. So that way it will not touch the water and uh, be good long term. So uh, over here, you know, I have an extra Vario 6 pump for my skimmer. Got a Vario 8 over there, extra, you know, gotta have extra pumps, guys. We can't recommend it enough. Um, this is my skimmer. It's some s giant external reef octopus. I forget the name, um, but, you know, it's being fed. There's a pump in here, it creates bubbles, etc. cetera. Uh, this is the Davy Jones locker. It has a carbon filter on it so it doesn't stink, but I can store all the poop in here from my skimmer for upwards of however long it takes to fill up. You know, um, I used to touch my skimmer once a week, every two weeks. Now I touch it once every three months. I have this cool little nifty pressure thing hooked up to my apex, and once it gets to a certain level, it turns the skimmer off and it texts me and says, hey, you're your thing is full, come clean it out. And like I said, it's once every three months now, opposed to once every two weeks. So it's a much better thing. Um, this is the uh, CO2 tank regulator. And uh, it feeds the calcium reactor. And I like the CO2 tank up front, really accessible, really able to get in and out because I changed that so much. Uh, in this tank, it's only been set up for eight months. I've already changed that tank three times and that's just because I'm um, you know just melting a lot of coral you know I'm melting a lot of coral in this costume reactor um, I use a geos 818 whatever their model is you know um, I really like the reactor it's pretty simple works pretty good but uh, something I will note is that I don't run or I, I, I don't know who I learned it from but basically I like to have shorter intervals of problems. So I'm always just topping it off. I always just top it off, top it off, top it off. And that way the stability inside the calcium reactor chemistry wise and the stability for your tank chemistry wise, the swings are as least as possible. You, you do a huge um, refill on your calcium reactor and it's, it's, it's a massive swing chemistry wise of what you're possibly dosing your tank wise. You know, you don't, eh, unless you have a trident, you don't really know, you know, and not everybody has a trident. So it's just something to keep in mind. <laughs> Um, this is the rest of my Apex gear over here, my Varios pumps, my uh, Vector L1, the, the the closed loop, all that good stuff. Uh, something to note again is I have that pH probe on my reactor, I have it go down here on the outside, and then I have it go right down here to the where it's plugged in. I don't like my probes to run over my power cords. I'm very particular about that, something small, but again, when we're dealing with these massive numbers of what we're dealing with and we're counting on trends to be able to recognize stuff, uh, I want to count on my tools. Um, that colander down there is down there because I actually top off my costume reactor so frequently I rinse the media and, and, and throw it in there, you know. But uh, yeah, so this is the tank. Um, I can actually take you to the last part, the shiny part now, uh, which is my lights, you know. This is my light setup. Uh, I like to show the side first so you can really see how it is. It's, you know, uh, the reef brights on the outsides, the T5s just uh, inwards of those outsides, two bulbs each, and then Stratton's in the center. I really, really, really like the Stratton's. 
Um, they've done really well for me. I really like the colors they put out. I really like the par they put out. I really like the design. Um, I have a f large tank though, so I had to end up adding the uh, T5 and Reef Bright. As you can see, I mean, I got a, at least a foot on either side of those Stratons. So, you know, I had to add something extra and I'm pretty happy with how they're performing. I mean, you can see the tank, the colors, the the spread. I mean, as far as it goes, I'm really, really uh, happy with the results of these lights so far uh, and my light setup overall. Uh, I'm, I, this is the first LED I will say that I've actually tried and been happy with. You know, I'm, I'm more of the halide, more of the T5 guy, <clears throat> and this is giving me the results that I want. You know, I don't really care about the shimmer. There's not much shimmer. You know, I was never really crazy about it. There's not much. Um, you can see there's a little bit in the sand bed, but it's mostly just strong, uniform light. Um, you know, it's kind of funny how it picks up that pink, that pink blinking. I think it's like because it's like PWM, you know, and the the frame rate of the image sensor and the light is different or something like that. But um, the panel on these things is sweet. They put out a lot of energy, and then uh, I've I read somewhere that they're like seriously overpowered lights. Uh, the LEDs, so they only run them at like 40%, so that's why they don't get hot. You know, they're they're a big-ass LED that uh, they're undervolting, and that's why they don't produce heat, because they're not running anywhere where they were designed to run at. They're, they're running very cool, to the touch, even. Um, so, I've been pretty happy with those lights, because the, no, the noise, uh, it's a big thing for me, too, is I don't like the fan drone noise, unnecessarily. Uh, but yeah, so, pretty happy. As you can see, it's, it's doing pretty good results. Um, I, uh, I'm quite happy with how everything is going. I just wanted to show how everything's going. As you can see here, I mean, you can see the under shadow. That's a large coral there. That's a large coral, and it's still putting down the lights pretty well. So uh, here's a little bit of the shimmer that you're looking for with the Stratons. If anyone's looking for shimmer, that's about what you're going to get out of it. Um, like I said, I'm not really big on shimmer, so it doesn't really care. It doesn't really matter for me. From the aquarium, we go out to my porch, and we go out to my garage, and then we have the mixing station out here. Okay, so this is actually my uh, I set was it seven stage or something? I don't know, whatever the hell you want to call the stage. I think it's these included in the stages, so probably nine stage, I'd say. Well, what it really is is just sediment, carbon, carbon. I have two different carbons. One of them specifically designed for chloramines because of my uh, municipal water here is chloramine filtered. So I make sure to run those. I run 275 gallon per days so that I can get the production I need. And then I run four DI because I want to be saving as much money as possible. DI is expensive. Um, and I buy an expensive DI that's, uh, uh, here it's right. Right here, this is this is the stuff I buy. These are my filters, but this is the stuff that I really recommend. Um, let's see. Here you go, Spectra Pure, um, and it's the silicate removal one. So high capacity, whatever. But um, these guys are great. You know, they're they're single use canister, and I I stagger them so I can get everything I possibly can out of them. But uh, I, I I don't like silicates. You know. Um, next is the the drum. 110, 110, or 105, 105 uh, gallon water drums. So, you know, 210 or 220 total volume. I want to say it's 220. Let's see, what does it say? Yeah, it is 105. So it is uh, not what I thought it was. It was uh, 210 total instead of 220. I never use that much. I only use 180 maximum. But anyways, uh, this I'll close off these valves, open up that. That goes to the tank. Um, it's controlled by my apex. So literally, like I open up the valve over there, I open up the valves here, and I flip switches, and it just pumps my salt water, which is temperature driven, uh, controlled. Um, you know, I got the pump to feed it. This giant square thing behind here is actually a 275 gallon uh, reservoir for RODI. So uh, this is basically my station for my water. And like I said, I, it pumps water all the way with the salt water. These lines right here are actually are driven by a little tiny pump in the thing, and these go through the ceiling too. Uh, those are for fresh water for all the tanks. So that line uh, is hooked up to those little floats, like I showed you earlier uh, with the sharp angle. Um, they receive fresh water from the whole house and it's actually really, really convenient. It saves me a lot of time and uh, my tanks always have fresh water no matter what, I never have to think about it. So anyways, that's the setup. See, that's where they actually go up into the attic. And 
back at the tank. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later.